Across the animal kingdom, there are thousands of weird and interesting ways that animals both find a mate and actually reproduce. If we look at the bigger picture, we are the odd ones out in the mammal world, as only around 3-5% to of mammals are monogamous. It's a completely different story in the bird world, as it's thought that around 90% of bird species are truly monogamous. Birds really do seem to be the most romantic group of animals, as they not only have elaborate courtship displays, but they also dance together after spending months apart and take it in turns to look after their young. Mating itself can be very strange for some species, because animals such as pandas don't seem to be too interested in mating at all. On the other hand, there is a small family of marsupials that is very interested in mating, but mating for certain species in this family is fatal. If you're a male in the bug world, intercourse can also be quite dangerous, as famously female mantises will bite off the heads of their mates, and then they will devour their corpse afterwards for nourishment. For some animals it really does seem that romance is dead, but what is strange for us is completely normal to them. In this video I will be going through just a few stories of animals that mate in strange ways, as I will be going through three animals with the most bizarre breeding habits. And for our first story we will be heading over to Madagascar, as our first animal is the Thusa. The Fusa is the largest carnivorous mammal on the island of Madagascar, and it can measure up to 1.8 meters in length. The Fusa is yet another creature that looks both cat and dog-like, but really it's not closely related to either of them. It's most closely related to the African mongooses, yet it is a lot larger than these relatives. The Fusa's scientific name translates to hidden anus, but you'll be happy to know that this has nothing to do with its breeding habits. Fusas really are the most impressive predators in Madagascar, and will hunt both during the day and during during the night. They are just as happy on the ground as they are in the trees, and the majority of their diet is made up of lemurs. To help them catch their prey they have retractable claws and cat-like teeth, and this usually means that most prey items stand no chance. To help them move swiftly up and down trees, Fusa have flexible ankles and long tails, and they usually descend trees head first. Fusas are mostly solitary but they do come together during the mating season, and males have been seen working together to take down larger lemur species. Fusas don't only feed on lemurs as they will also hunt fish, birds and lizards. This is really quite a varied diet for this mammal, and in the past it used to have a lot more competition. It had a much larger extinct relative known as the giant fusa, and this giant fusa might have preyed on the even larger elephant bird. It's unfortunate that these giants are extinct nowadays, and unfortunately the fusa could be heading that way too. It is currently listed as vulnerable, and this is mainly due down to deforestation and habitat loss across their range. All in all, the Fusa is quite a unique and strange creature. There seems to be no other living predators like it, and it's quite fitting that their mating habits are also quite strange. When a female Fusa is ready to mate, she'll find an adequate site high up in a tree. After this, males will start to congregate down below, and they will fight each other and call to the female. The female Fusa will stay at this site for up to a week, and she will pick and choose from the most impressive males. The female will mate with up to six different males in that one week, and copulation may last for several hours. This mating system in which a female monopolizes a site and chooses her mates seems to be unique among carnivores. It's a way of ensuring only the best genes are carried on, but among mammals this is quite a strange breeding habit. For our next story we will be heading into the oceans, as our next group of animals are the nudibranchs. Nudibranchs are a group of soft-bodied marine gastropod mollusks, and they're often commonly referred to as sea slugs. Nudibranchs are truly found all over the world, ranging from the Arctic to the tropical oceans. They seem to be almost entirely restricted to salt water, but a few species are known to enter brackish waters. As many nudibranch species are quite colourful and slow-moving, you could assume that they're easy pickings for most predators. But most nudibranchs have a secret weapon, as they rely on toxins or unpleasant tasting chemicals to defend themselves. All known nudibranch species are carnivorous, with some feeding on sponges and corals, whereas others are known to be cannibalistic. Amazingly, some nudibranch species are known to engage in photosynthesis. They do this by eating corals which are rich in algae, and the nudibranchs absorb the chloroplast of the algae. After this, they are able to engage in photosynthesis, and the created nutrients help the nudibranchs to survive. Even though there are around 3,000 species of nudibranch, they all seem to mate in a very similar way. It's fitting that this very alien looking creature has quite an alien way of reproducing, as nudibranchs are hermaphroditic. 
They have a set of reproductive organs from both sexes, yet they cannot fertilize themselves. Instead, in most cases, they will find another nudibranch, and in some cases, they will start a dance-like courtship. After this, they will both fertilize each other, and then they will start laying their eggs. The number of eggs varies from species to species, as some are known for laying just one or two, whereas others may lay an estimated 25 million eggs. Although at first it may seem strange, it's a very efficient way of reproducing, and it seems to work out just fine for the nudibranchs. But for our final story, we will be heading over to North America, as our final species is the North American porcupine. The North American porcupine is a large quill-covered rodent, and it does a very good job at defending itself. It is the second largest rodent in North America, and it's a rodent that most predators don't mess with. The quills on its back are hollow, and measure around 5-7cm to seven centimeters long. These quills are lightly attached to the porcupine's skin, and when predators attack the porcupine, the quills are not thrown or shot, but instead they are just pushed into the predator's skin. Because the quills are only lightly attached to the porcupine, they will soon leave their skin, and they stay embedded in the predator. Their diet seems to change with the seasons, but they feed on a wide range of vegetation from roots and twigs to berries and leaves. It's essential that porcupines have a very impressive defense, as they are nearsighted and very slow moving. Even though their defenses are quite impressive, they are still taken down by some predators, such as fishes, wolverines, coyotes, cougars, and American black bears. In most cases, these predators have to tackle them while they're unaware, because this means that there's less chance of them getting quilled. If you're a human and you are quilled by a porcupine, it can be very painful and inconvenient, but it's not exactly a big deal. That's because luckily we humans have hands, and this means that we can remove the quills. For other animals, being quilled can be a lot more serious, because not only are they very painful, but the quills are also barbed. This means that they're very hard to remove, and this is especially the case if you have no hands. Although the Fusa and the North American porcupine are very different creatures, there are some similarities between their mating habits. North American porcupines are mostly solitary, but they come together to breed. And when the female is ready, she will secrete a thick mucus, which she will then mix with her urine. This alerts all males in the area, and they will soon follow the scent. After this, the female will then select a mate, and she does this based on size and density of quills. This male will then guard a base of a tree, and then the female will climb said tree. He will then relentlessly fend off rivals, and some of these fights can be to the death. Once the male has won all of his fights, the female will then come down from her tree and the male will urinate on her. After this, they will eventually mate. And then the female will move on to another tree and she'll start calling out for more males to join her and start the process all over again. Breeding for the North American porcupine is quite intense and confusing, but at least it's not boring. If you know of any other creatures that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.